You may have read some of her work in Reductress, and I had the great pleasure of performing with her at the Kennedy Center about a year ago, and I'm so thrilled to have her back. Please give a warm welcome to Gigi Lee. When I was 11, I accidentally went to Bible camp. It was called Kids Camp, camp spelled with a K, so you knew it was like a cool Bible camp. And my best friend Amy convinced me to go. It was outside of Miami, where we were from, and it was a week-long sleepaway camp. And at the end of the week, they had a talent show. And even though she mentioned it was sponsored by her Baptist church, all I could think was, oh my god, talent show? I have all of these song and dance routines that I never get to perform. This is my time to shine. And so I convinced my atheist Korean parents to let me go to this Bible camp. And I was like, it's really cheap. And they said yes, because they love a bargain more than their beliefs. <laughs> and I was so excited, and I start to prepare my routine. And since this is my first time performing for an audience, I decide to go with something simple, like a song by Mariah Carey. And the song is Someday, which is classic Mariah belting it out. Yeah. Thank you, yes. And it is classic 90s R&B with a guitar solo that just happens to work. Um, and I start practicing, and I don't know if it's my lack of vocal training or the fact that I don't have Mariah's five octave range, but I can't hit the high notes at the end when she's like, someday. And so my solution is, I'm still gonna sing the song, obviously, but at the end, I'm gonna pump up the music and do a dance routine thereby uh, avoiding my weakness, actual singing, and highlighting my strengths, 90s dance moves. <laughs> I was like, this camp won't know what hit them. So I get to the camp, and it is in this secluded area in the woods. It's the perfect site for a camp or human sacrifice. <laughs> and everyone is white, everyone is Baptist. I was like, oh, I forgot about that. And, and I feel like, well, just because I'm Korean and the only non-Baptist person here doesn't mean I'm different from everyone else. I have nothing to worry about. And then I get to my cabin, and I'm unpacking. And as I'm unpacking, I start singing Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. And my counselor just stops me and says, that song is inappropriate. It's about being possessed by the devil. And I was like, I just liked it because it was in Wayne's World. And then it starts to hit me like, wow, uh, when they mentioned Bible cab, <laughs> I didn't realize that they were gonna like make references to the Bible all the time. <laughs> and it just got much more Bible-y from there. Um, we had the same schedule every day. We had morning worship, afternoon worship, evening worship, campfire worship. And I would just look around and be like, oh my God, is no one here 11? Like, aren't you guys bored? <laughs> And we were only allowed to have church-approved, like, fun activities. Like, we were allowed to watch movies um, like uh, The Rocketeer or Driving Miss Daisy. And we also had choir. And choir was taught by this very nice old man who taught us songs that made me feel a little self-conscious. Like, one song, um, and feel free to sing along if you remember this. It's, uh, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. Very catchy. And um, at the end of that song, they made us do a racial roll call. So it'd be like, Jesus loves the little children, red. And everyone had to go, woo, 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 woo. Yellow, ching chong, ching chong. Black, it was like break dancing. And then white was just shooting guns at each other, because they were cowboys. <laughs> and I would just look around being like, oh my God, is no one here an adult? Do you not see anything wrong with this? But the adults are singing louder than the kids, and they're really into it. And so now I feel very out of place. And on top of that, my one friend Amy uh, kind of ditches me to hang out with the cool Bible kids. And I'm physically sick because I kind of went to town on all of the American food that I never get to have at home. So I, it is wreaking havoc on my stomach. I have to go to the infirmary. So even my stomach starts to feel out of place. And in this moment of loneliness and exclusion, I turn to my only salvation, Mariah. And I put all of my energy and efforts into this routine. And so while everyone else is at, is at worship, I sneak into the bathroom and practice my moves because I need to do Mariah justice, and I need to show these people that I am not just some color in a racial roll call. 
I am a performer who just happens to not have any vocal or dance training, okay? And so now it's the night of the talent show. I have survived a week of worship, racist Bible songs, starch, and I am ready. And people go up and perform and they do a Bible rap and they sing songs by Amy Grant, which, which is kind of catchy. And then it's my turn. And while everyone else is wearing khakis and buttoned up collared shirts, I am wearing skin tight spandex because I need everyone to see this body <laughs> moving, even though I'm 11. And I start singing, you were so blind to let me go. And all of the, like, the audience members like, are there, like politely nodding along. <laughs> And then the music comes on, and I start with some dance moves. Easy, like a little kitten play, a little Roger Rabbit. <laughs> and then I unleash the pelvic thrusts. I do a pelvic thrust over here! And then I do a pelvic thrust over here! And then I do a round the world pelvic thrust! Surely such thrusting had never been seen in such a holy sight! And the audience is loving it! And I feel good, I feel confident, I'm not gonna hold back. So I decide I'm gonna do my piece de resistance, a move that I've been perfecting all week. A back bend with more pelvic thrusts. <laughs> I am basically humping the air. And, and then I think, oh wait, did I go too far? Like, can they handle such secular movement? And I look out, and the crowd is going wild. They are hooting and hollering. It is as if they are possessed by the spirit of Mariah Carey herself. <laughs> to this day, that was the best performance of my life. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was the last night of camp, so the next day, no one remembered and no one cared. But I still felt like a superstar. And um, that week, I did not find Jesus. Uh, but I did find my love of performing, and to this day, I bow to the altar of Mariah Carey. Thank you. <laughs>